leadership team that we would be ready for weekend masses on the weekend of the 21st and 22nd of November, it is now clear that this time frame will not be possible. Therefore, following the revised work program offered to us by the builders, we will now not be able to return to masses at our Southern Mass Centre at Oran Park till the weekend of the 28th and 29th of November. In the light of this, Father David and the parish leadership team had now discerned that weekend masses on the weekend of the 28th and 29th of November and on the weekend of the 5th and 6th of December will be closed masses that will be reserved for over 160 of our young fellow parishioners who prepared for their first Holy Communion earlier in the year to receive this sacrament. Then, from Sunday the 12th of December onwards, the Saturday 5pm and Sunday 10am Masses at Oran Park will be open to the wider parish to pre-register to attend. In terms of our Northern Mass Centre at Leppington, from next Sunday, the 15th of November, the Sunday morning Mass will return to its pre-COVID time of 8 a.m. This 8 a.m. Sunday Mass will be open to 30 parishioners who, as is already happening with our current 9.30 a.m. Sunday Mass at Leppington, will need to pre-register and follow the protocols of our parish COVID safe plan. Bookings to attend this 8 a.m. Mass on Sunday the 15th of November are now open through our parish Eventbrite link that can be found on our parish website, marymckilletparish.org.au. This delay in the building project will now allow us to extend the cutoff date for those who would like to be involved in ministries. While Father David and the parish leadership team and the parish liturgy team would like to thank all those who have responded to the invitation for existing minister, ministers in all ministries to re-sign up to their ministries, or for those not on any ministry roster to sign up for the first time, at this stage, the response has been low. While we are seeking parishioners to serve in a variety of ministries, we are especially in great need of volunteers to serve as mass monitors and as members of our after mass cleaning teams. So if you would like to serve in a liturgical ministry at either our Leppington or Oran Park mass centres, or for more information about ministry opportunities in the parish, please contact the parish office via email before next weekend. Your assistance in these vital ministries will ensure we continue to worship safely. This November, an organisation called Australia Reads is inviting Australians of all ages to celebrate the joys of reading and to find time to stop for an hour, pick up a book, and read to yourself or others. 
To coincide with this initiative, this Thursday, the 12th of November at 7 p.m., you are invited to join Father David and other fellow parishioners for the Voice of St. Mark. This event, to be held on Zoom and also accessible through our parish Facebook page, will see parishioners and friends of our parish read out loud a few chapters each of Mark's Gospel. This is a unique opportunity to hear and to read a gospel from start to finish. If all goes to plan, it will run from 7pm to 8.30pm. You can stay for the whole reading or drop into this live streamed event during the evening. The Zoom link for this event will be posted early this week on our parish Facebook page. Father David is also on the lookout for any parishioners or friends of the parish who would like to be one of those who read out loud a few chapters of the Gospel. If you would like to assist with this, please send an email care of the parish office no later than this Tuesday. Well now, it's time for Mass. To get the most out of Mass, to truly prepare yourself, we encourage you to sit, stand, kneel and sing. Do all the things you might normally do in a church building. If you're new or if it's been a while, just try to bring yourself to a place of stillness and be present to everything that's going on, knowing that we're all connected wherever we are, whichever device we're participating on, through our one loving God. I invite you now, if you can, to please stand and join in our gathering song in this place. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Well, I too welcome you as we gather around the altar to celebrate this Mass. We've entered together into this holy month of November, a month when we pray with and for those who have lost loved ones. We pray too for the repose of the souls of all those that have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. But I think you'd agree with me this month of November is all the more poignant this year as we recall all of those people who have lost their lives as a result of COVID-19. Not only in our own nation of Australia, but in all the places around the world that we are gathered to celebrate this live stream mass together. So I invite you to join with me as we remember all those that have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. We especially remember too those whose names are inscribed in our parish book of remembrance that is here before the ambo, along with the names of all of our deceased relatives, friends and fellow parishioners whose names are inscribed on our hearts. 
In particular, tonight we join with one of our fellow parishioners and their family in praying for the repose of the soul of Danilo Balani, whose first anniversary of his passing occurs at this time. We pray for the repose of the soul of Danilo and we pray for his family and for all those in Australia and around the world who mourn for him at this time. Brothers and sisters, as we enter together into this Mass, we gather in the presence of our God. We call upon God's mercy and compassion. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth, Peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble. You will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert for her and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her and graciously shows herself to them as they go in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you, my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. On my bed I must remember you. On you I muse through the night. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantages over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up into the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Watchful and ready, you know not when the Son of Man is coming. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. According to St Matthew's Gospel that we've just heard, Jesus was speaking in Jerusalem in the last days before his passion and his death. And Jesus told this parable that we've just heard. It's a parable of a bride, a bridegroom, and those who are waiting in attendance. And the opening line of the gospel is, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. This particular phrase was borrowed from the customs and the traditions of first century Palestine, Jesus' time. A first century Jewish wedding began after nightfall, generally towards midnight. The bridesmaids, after spending time with the bride, would go out to meet the bridegroom once he announced he was on his way. Since it was dark, they would all carry an oil lamp. Then they would escort the bridegroom to the bride. The wedding party then made their way through the village, usually taking a long winding road in order to share their joy with as many of the townspeople as possible. They eventually went to the bridegroom home where a great banquet awaited all of the family members and guests. Tonight's gospel brings us back to the theme of wisdom that we've just heard in the first reading. The gospel is one of the most dramatic parables of our Lord. The parable revolves around the wedding banquet, the ten bridesmaids and their lamps. Of course, the number 10 is very significant in the Bible. It signifies perfection or completion of a divine order. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes, 10 commandments. Our Lord cured 10 lepers. And the Lord's Prayer has 10 parts. Anyway, back to the Gospel. The message of this particular parable is very clear. We need to make sure we are like those wise bridesmaids in the parable that we've just heard, that we always have enough oil for our lamps. 
but five of them did not have enough oil. They had an opportunity to get a supply during the day, but they didn't bother. Then when it was time for the wedding, it was too late. It reminds us that we have to make choices going through life. And we live afterwards with the consequences of those choices. There is no getting away from making those decisions and choices. The option we have is to choose well or to choose badly. Whatever way we choose, we will live with the consequences. Some of the bridesmaids in the parable squandered that opportunity that they had during the day to get some oil. The parable reminds us to choose well because at the end of our life we'll meet our Saviour and we don't know when he will call us. That's why Jesus said in the Gospel, stay awake because you do not know either the day or the hour. Each decision or choice we make going through life is a decision with consequences. When Jesus calls us from this life, whenever that will be, we'll face the consequences of all our decisions, either for or against Jesus. So to apply this parable to our lives is very important. The ten bridesmaids rep represent all of us who are baptized and who have been called by God as candidates for the banquet in heaven. We know the bridegroom is coming. Christ is the bridegroom and we are the church of the bride. We're all waiting for him so we can follow him into the place he has prepared for us. I guess another way of looking at it is that the ten bridesmaids had lamps. It's the same way that there are many Christians who hold Bibles in their hands but are spiritually empty. To be a token Christian is not enough to admit us into the kingdom of heaven. We need to make sure that we're always renewing our life of faith through prayer, through the Eucharist, through readings of the Gospels, through the graces we receive by the power of God's sacraments. These things are the oil that Jesus is talking about. The oil of our prayer, the oil of our personal acts of piety and devotion, all our efforts to work with God's graces and to grow in virtue and holiness. I think one mistake we all make is to think that we don't have enough time to pray. There are more important priorities in our lives. We will do it later, we'll pray later, but we never do. All it takes is a few minutes each day in the silence of our hearts to center our minds on Jesus. Jesus is expecting beautiful things from us, from each and every one of us. So we need this oil. We need this oil of prayer, the oil of good works, of charity, so our lamps keep burning brightly, so we can shine as the light of Christ into every corner of our society. And our Lord uses these symbols to talk about the light of faith that is within us and the need for this faith to be sustained. Therefore, it's not a coincidence that one of the symbols used in baptism is a candle. When the candle is lit, the priest or a deacon says, receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He or she is to walk always as the child of the light. 
may he or she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart or his heart with the light of faith present at our baptism the main work is just beginning to keep the light burning brightly that's where the bridesmaids are really revealed as wise or foolish both groups have the light but only one will be able to keep it so as we are waiting for the bridegroom to come through a long night as we await for the master to arrive our challenge our challenge is how do we wait do we wait foolishly or wisely that is the power of this parable Deacon Sam has beautifully reminded us in his homily this evening of our call to be women and men of children of the light. And every time we gather around the altar on a solemnity or at Sunday Eucharist, we renew that baptismal commitment. In a sense, we ask for that re-sparking of our faith. So wherever we may be, whatever device we're using to participate in this Mass, if you are able, I invite you now to stand with me to renew that baptismal commitment using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we know, it's not just those who reside in the boundary of the parish of Oran Park and Leppington who have participated since we began these Masses. It's people around our nation and around the world. And in recent days, via our parish social media and email, I've received a number of messages not only from so many of you who are fellow parishioners in this parish boundary, but people right around the world. And that includes people who are gathered with us this evening. You are gathered there in countries, in nations, that right at this very moment are moving back into lockdown. And you have reminded me of how much these live stream masses mean to you. So as we gather as a community of many nations, Illuminated by Christ our light, with open hearts we pray. For the church, that we may find the spring of life deep within us, that will enable us to be light for others in times of darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of fidelity, that we may faithfully follow Christ each day of our life, acting justly, loving tenderly and walking humbly before God and thus keep our light burning until Christ comes. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit so that they can ensure human rights for all people, work for peace and make a strong commitment to the welfare of the poor, needy and sick. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who are working tirelessly in the pursuit of a vaccine for COVID-19, as well as healthcare workers around the world and those suffering from the disease, that God will renew their spirits and give them strength that endures. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving the death of a loved one, that God will wipe away their tears, be a sustaining presence for them, and heal the pain of separation in their hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially our family members, friends, and public servants and clergy who have died during the past year, that God will lead them into eternal life and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, fill with joy those who are thirsting for you and grant the prayers of those who seek you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it, with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Most Holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth 
a full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian Mascord, our Bishop, and all women and men who lead and serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially all those we remember during this holy month of November, along with Danilo Balani, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Mary of the Cross MacKillop and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world Grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we gather to participate in this Mass, having listened to God's Word and prayed together the Eucharistic prayer, I invite you to join with me wherever we may be in our act of communion, this prayer that we pray, asking Jesus to spiritually enter into our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
as we always do at this moment in the Mass, let us now spend a moment together in silent prayer, praising and thanking our good God for the gift of his Son Jesus, who comes among us through word and through sacrament. Let us draw all of our prayers together as we pray and sing our song of praise. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thanks as always for joining me around this altar to celebrate this live stream Mass. 
A big thank you to our fellow parishioners who have ministered once again among us through word, through song and through AV and tech today. We are slowly transitioning back to our Southern Mass Centre and so some of our regular tech equipment has already been installed by the AV crew into the Southern Mass Centre. So I hope and pray all of you, wherever you've been gathered tonight, have been able to pick us up and have been able to tune in and to celebrate with us this Mass. As Emma reminded us in our Before Mass notices, there's a great event that we're having in our parish on Thursday evening at 7pm. Recently, I came across uh, an email from an organisation that during this time of COVID-19 was reminding us of the power of what we can do together. And they're encouraging people this coming Thursday to read, to pick up a book. And I thought to myself, well, what is the greatest book that we as people of faith can pick up? And that's the word of our God. And as I'm sure some of you are aware, in a few weeks' time, we'll celebrate the great feast of Christ the King that ends our church's liturgical year. And what will blossom will be a new year, a new liturgical year with the season of Advent. And during Advent, we'll be reading from the shortest of the Gospels, the Gospel of Mark. But in my former parish where I ministered as pastor, the parish of Albion Park, we took up an opportunity that we'll also be taking up on Thursday to read Mark from the first chapter to the last. And if all goes to plan, we'll be able to do that reflective reading together in about 90 minutes. I don't know if you've ever sat down and in one sitting read a whole gospel from beginning to end. But this is a pretty unique opportunity to do this together via all of the forms that we have available to us through Zoom and through our parish Facebook feed. And as Emma reminded us, I'm on the lookout for some of you who might like to be there on Zoom in your home environment and just read a couple of chapters of Mark's Gospel. So if that's something you'd like to assist me with, please send a phone call or an email to the parish office by Tuesday of this week and I'll be able to send out to you your chapters that you will be reading as part of this special evening on Thursday when we read together the whole of the Gospel of St. Mark. We take up this national initiative to pick up the greatest story ever told and to read it, to reflect on it and to pray with it from beginning to end. During this holy month of November, we do pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Let us now pause and remember all of our dear relatives and friends who we commend to God's mercy. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head for the blessing. Keep your family safe, O Lord, we pray, and grant us the abundance of your mercies, that we may find growth through the teachings and the gifts of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Glory is you. 